probably the primary reason why a balanced diet, focus on that word specifically, why a balanced diet is so necessary, is the following point. No, before we get to these images, this is no single, no single food contains, I guess you know what's coming here, or the, the, the generalness of what's going to come here, contains all necessary nutrients. Okay, so let's just reflect on that briefly before we take this a little bit further. What we're saying here is that whether it's a lettuce, whether it's a hamburger, whether it's a piece of fish, there is no food out there that contains all necessary nutrients, okay? So on that, that I mean, that reason alone means that a balanced diet is the thing that we should be aiming for, right? Uh, for ourselves, for our families, for athletes we're working with, whatever it happens to be, right? That's what we're trying to achieve. Of course, we're going to bring this into the performance scope at times and be thinking about sort of types of foods which might be recommended and balances and might be different from people to people. But the key point is here, that one there. Now, I want to give you, I suppose, a very simplistic notion of a balanced diet, okay? A balanced diet. So these are some things that you might want to just be initially thinking of. Basically, what we're saying here we, is we want lots of, lots of the following. We want lots of the following, okay? Lots of the following. Before we look at this in more detail, we want lots of nutrients. Okay, now that's quite a general term. We're talking about partially to do with energy, or that would hopefully not be too much. We're looking here at uh, different types of nutrients. We are looking here across proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. We are looking here at vitamins, which we want lots of, and we are looking here at minerals. And this is, I guess, why the images I've selected here are quite um, broad in their scope. I'm going to give you a much broader one in a few moments' time, but I'm trying to give you a representation of different things, okay? So don't forget in here, and we'll talk about this in much more detail uh, in the future, but don't forget in here we're including water, we're including fiber, but of course these vitamins and minerals are also really, really important, okay? So what have we got as images here? Well, I've got kind of fruit and veg. Let's put this in as F and V, I suppose we could put there. Uh, we've got sort of oils and fish. I mean, this represents, I guess, some kind of um, balance between proteins and also and also fats. We've got a burger, which is kind of more fast food, although it does has you know it has some interesting elements in it in the form of vegetables. It has some um, has some white bread as well. It has some sesame seeds, not uninteresting. And these, I guess, we would call legumes, different kind of protein sources and what have you. So we, we've got these sorts of notions representing. But really, where I want to go with this, guys, is is in two further places. The first thing, and by far the most central thing is to identify three, <laughs> if I spell it right, it helps, is to represent, is to identify three reasons for a balanced diet, okay? Three reasons for a balanced diet. So three primary reasons, and then later I'm gonna try and give you a representation of what that might look like. So the first reason that we want balance is a really interesting one, actually, and one you've probably come across a lot in, um, in biology in general i mean obviously we're studying pe here but you know this section of p and biology are very closely associated but it's the idea that unused energy unused energy is stored okay and it's often as a fat okay so unused energy is often stored as a fat okay now we do store energy in other formats we store carbohydrate energy but not a great deal we store that in the liver and the muscle of course fat we store under the skin and this can lead to obesity potentially so one of the primary reasons that we would look for a balanced diet is to prevent the threat of this condition, which we know is a risk factor for all kinds of other conditions, including death, by the way. Um, but obesity can have serious um, implications for things like type 2 type diabetes, coronary heart disease, also um, issues around joints as well, even uh, psychological conditions like depression. So this is a really important thing to um to sort of avoid and if you come back to this notion of storage of energy this will not be a surprise to you i mean look what you're when, in biology when you're studying plants for example when they, and, and when they've got lots of light intensity for long periods of time okay they're able to make more glucose and they and they store it they're all but also able to make more oils and they store it and you guys know how that they do that well people are the same and they've just got a different storage mechanism we store fat under this under the skin as what we call subcutaneous fat but of course that can lead to health implications and getting heavier for one of a better one of a simpler uh, point the next thing 
is that, and the reasons why we want to balance that diet is we want suitable levels of energy. Okay, so you're getting this energy points coming through now. We need suitable energy available for activity. Now, the point I would make here is a very simple one. People need a certain energy balance. All right, so just on this one, just be reminded, or maybe it's not reminded, but it's the first time you've seen it. Just be reminded that we're talking about adults here. Adult men require in the region of 2,500 kilocalories per day, okay? So men require approximately that much energy, like calorie being a, a, a measure of energy, of course, well, heat specifically, but anyway. And women require in the region of 2,000 kilocalories. Now, the point we're trying to make here is that this suitable level of energy should be available for activity. And if we don't eat enough, for example, or we don't have a balanced enough diet, we won't have that energy. But if we eat too much, it might get stored as that fat principle we looked at before. My last point before we summarize, and I think this is a really important point too, is that nutrients, nutrients, you know, often we'd be talking about proteins with what I'm gonna say here, for growth, so we need nutrients for growth, energy, growth, energy, and hydration. So I wanna pick out three words there, I'm sure you could do it yourself. But there's three points there. First of all, we want there to be enough hydration. Now, obviously, that means drinking water amongst, I guess it could be other drinks, but let's focus on water. Um, secondly, we do take fluids in, in certain foods. Fruits are a good example. Vegetables are a good example, for example. So we're taking in hydration. Secondly, we want foods with energy, particularly things which are carbohydrate and fat-based. And we do need those things. They're not bad. We do need aspects of those. And for growth, we're really looking at our amino acid chains, and therefore we are looking at proteins okay so just be aware of that one okay so let's let's link three things off here water or if, if i maybe put it as fluids are going to be important in our diet in any kind of balanced diet energy here we're looking at carbs and fats in the right proportions and the right amounts and for growth we're looking at proteins now to finish this whole thing off and i don't know i mean i think it's more of a representation of, than anything but i just wanted to bring you down to what we refer to as the eat well guide i'm not going to do any work on it but i encourage you to sort of reflect on it and have, have a look at it <clears throat> this guide talks to us both about the proportion of different kind of new, uh, nutrients that we want, want in our diet. You see here, for example, the um, fruits and vegetables, for example, we are recommended in quite large proportion. Here we have our carbohydrates here, for example, in quite large proportion. So this represents our proportion, but it's also capable of, of representing the idea of quantity. Okay, quantity. And the eat well plate is kind of helpful for that. So I just wanted to show it to you. There's lots of things like eat less of these in small amounts as examples. It tells you about portions um, of different things. It gives you an overall impact of how one's diet might be. It also addresses water in this case. So it addresses both proportional quantity. The only thing to bear in mind is that proportion in most cases is relatively consistent from person to person. Athletes might be a different proportion, but generally speaking, but quantity will vary from person to person. I think men and women, men on average, loads of exceptions, men on average require to eat slightly more than women on average, not every man to every woman, obviously. But this proportion stuff, a balanced diet remains pretty consistent.